Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for a controversial video, but nonetheless, it's one that I wanted to do because as a Chelsea channel, if I don't cover what is going on in the news with managers being linked and Lampard maybe being on the verge of the sack for the past week or two, then I wouldn't really be doing the, the overall rounded view of Chelsea justice right now. So it's a tier list video, but before we get into anything, I'm delighted to announce that today's video is actually brought to you and sponsored by NordV which is a wonderful company that I actually use on a daily basis. You guys know, because I tell you in every blooming video, I live in Bali and I want to watch the Premier League online with English commentary, so I use my VPN to not only protect my internet security, my laptop becomes in the United Kingdom so I can watch the football live from the UK. It's something that I use every single day, and as a special offer just for you guys, there is 70% off if you sign up for a two-year plan, which basically makes the value of what you're paying for the same as a coffee that you buy every day, but this is just once a month and it will protect you guys and if you're traveling or wherever you may be if you want to watch content from somewhere else you can do so without any problems whatsoever so the code is of course you guessed it yes guys it wouldn't be anything else here on the gbfc channel thank you nordvpn for sponsoring the link to the everything is in the description you can go and check it out go and sign up it would support the channel and it will help you guys out as well but it is a controversial one, I'm not gonna lie. The fact that Frank Lampard is still in a job, I fully endorse the fact he's still in a job. I think it's way too early to consider sacking Frank Lampard at this point. We've seen other managers, and I've talked about it recently here on the channel, Solskjaer, Klopp, Guardiola, just to name three, managers that have been given time, and eventually, it's looking like it's paying fruits. Liverpool have won Champions Leagues, Premier Leagues, United are in contention for a Premier League title, Guardiola, he's got his Manchester City side ticking again, despite questions being asked of him. Frank Lampard, even though last season wasn't perfect, we got a top four finish. We've already made it out of the Champions League group with a game to spare, winning it this time round. Just a couple of weeks ago, we were in a title conversation. We're only seven points off the top. We've only got one win in our last seven, but I feel as though it is certainly far too early to write Frank Lampard off at Chelsea. A lot of people are doing so. We know that football is a very reactionary sport where things don't go well and immediately you start looking at alternatives or reasons to, you know, pursue Lampard losing his job. I don't want to see Lampard lose his job. I believe that he's got enough about him to turn this around and what he's done at Chelsea in the short period of time that he's been here is something that sets the club up for a wonderful future. Bringing through the youth academy, securing Champions League football for this season, getting the fans back in on side again in a romantic way, connecting the club to us. It's been beautiful. And I think it's not just that, but I do believe that Frank Lampard tactically does have enough to turn things around. Yes, I feel as though he's got to change it. I think he's got to play to the strengths of some of our more prominent players. And at the moment, I I've said it countless times, I'm not going to go into it in any more detail today. Chelsea have become predictable, we're lacking a bit of quality right now, but I do firmly believe that Lampard can turn it around. However, it wouldn't be realistic of me to not even consider, considering what we know of Chelsea in the past, of how we chop and change managers, the merry-go-round has been that we've never really had a manager come in, create a dynasty for multiple years, but on the flip side of that coin, We've also had a very successful period since Roman Abramovich took over. Lampard is under pressure, we know that, and I've shortlisted 10 managers who might succeed from Lampard if he is in fact to be fired. As I've already just said, I hope it's not the case, but let's go and rank all 10 of the potential candidates that I think could get the job if it happens. So then, without any further ado, we're going to start off with the current Wolves manager, Nuno Espirito Santo. Not somebody who has been mentioned in the conversation of potential future Chelsea managers too much. However, if we look at the job that he's done at Wolves in the Premier League, not only guiding them towards the Europa League, they're an established Premier League club now. Nuno Espirito Santo is definitely a manager who deserves a lot of respect. However, do I think he would work well at Chelsea, considering he doesn't have the Champions League experience and... With the current crop of players that we have, the Espirito Santo system of three centre-backs and flying forward wing-backs, I don't really think it's something that Chelsea Football Club would want to go back to, if we remember back to the Conte days, 
I think the playing personnel that we have now doesn't really suit that kind of style. So, for that reason, if Chelsea were to go for Espirito Santo, it would probably be a case of rinse and repeat, which is basically what we've done with managers throughout the entire Roman Abramovich era. They come in, it could have some kind of success, and then in terms of like a long-term plan, it doesn't really coincide with the kind of football that Chelsea want to play, or the direction we would want to go. So Espirito Santo goes straight into the rinse and repeat category. Moving into the next one, and this one, I'm just gonna straight up say it, I would not be interested in this whatsoever, despite winning a Europa League at Chelsea. Rafa Benitez's appointment, you remember it? It was, when he first came in, it did not go down very well at all with the Chelsea fan base. Rafa Benitez was always known for the little comments he'd make about Chelsea, Mourinho during that rivalry of Champions League games and Premier League clashes between Liverpool and Chelsea in the mid-2000s. Rafa Benitez came in, he did win us the Europa League, but it wasn't a very enjoyable one for the Chelsea fan base to say the least. And I think Rafa, he's kind of been out of top level football now for a while and I would never take him back even if we had the option. Manager number three that we're going to discuss is the current France manager, world champion, Former Chelsea boy, Didier Deschamps. He obviously won the World Cup with France in 2018. He's been the manager of France national team now, I think for like eight or nine years, which is quite a long time. And I'm thinking if with terms of like rational thoughts as to why and how this could happen, if France don't have the best Euros, of course, they can't really do much more to top what they lasted in a major competition. But if Deschamps doesn't have the best tournament with France, despite the quality they have in the Euros, then maybe he'd be after a new challenge and the Chelsea job could be something that Didier Deschamps actually would be interested in. However, uh, do I think this one could actually work? Considering he doesn't have that much experience as a club manager, and obviously he's got one of the easiest jobs in the world at the moment, it's never easy to manage an international club, I'm not saying that, but with that France squad, do we see enough of quality within the managerial prowess of Deschamps to be confident of him taking over Chelsea? I'm not entirely sure, however, I do think with how long he stayed in that France job, he could actually be somebody who Chelsea could consider as part of a long-term plan. So, gonna throw him into that category. And the next manager is somebody who, although I, this is very difficult for me to make this video, I'm trying to come up with like rational ideas as to how these potential managers would fit in at Chelsea, despite being still very stern on the fact that I still want Frank Lampard as the manager. However, if the option came about where Chelsea wanted to get rid of Lampard and Diego Simeone was in the pipeline, he is a manager that I absolutely love, which is not really nice going into a Champions League last 16 tie against the man himself, manager of Atletico Madrid. In the past nine years, Simeone has really formed a long-term relationship with Atletico Madrid. He's been there for a while. Despite the dominance of both Barcelona and Real Madrid in La Liga, Simeone always gets very close with his Atletico Madrid team. They've been close to winning the Champions League. I think they managed a La Liga title. Did they once? I think they did. Simeone is a man who I just love his passion. So for selfish reasons, if Lampard was no longer to be the Chelsea manager, Simeone would be one that I'd actually really like to see us go for. Although the style of football might not be the most attractive, I'm very much a football fan in, in the essence of I want to see my team win as opposed to playing the most beautiful fluid football and then maybe coming close. Now Simeone is definitely a master of coming close, but he's up against Real Madrid and Barcelona. So I think we've always got to remember that when we're talking about Simeone in that conversation. Personally, I think he's brilliant. I love his passion and I think he would bring a real energy to the Chelsea dressing room. I still want Frank Lampard. I don't want any of these words to be turned out of tune, but Simeone, I'd like it. Moving into another controversial one indeed, John Terry, current assistant with Aston Villa. He's a defensive coach there. And this would be a very similar one to that of Frank Lampard. I think considering John Terry hasn't actually managed a football club yet himself, the fact that it's Chelsea's captain, it's John Terry, it's another romantic story. If Lampard was to lose his job, the conversation about John Terry would certainly arise. But at this stage in John Terry's managerial development and career, I wouldn't be interested in this one. It would be pretty much the sidestep to Frank Lampard in this case. And can if Lampard can't handle it as his second job and his second and third year of management, according to the Chelsea hierarchy, 
they're never even going to consider John Terry as the replacement manager. It wouldn't make any sense. It's not going to happen. Maybe in 15, 20 years, we could see John Terry managing Chelsea. I'd love to see that one in the dugout. But I'd also like to see Frank there for the same amount of time as Sir Alex Ferguson. So we move again into another Premier League manager who is currently at Leicester City. And he will always be linked with the Chelsea job if there is a vacancy as the Chelsea managerial role. Brendan Rodgers, manager of the under-18s between 2004 and 2008. There is an affiliation between Brendan Rodgers and Chelsea. And the way that Brendan Rodgers is establishing himself as a top Premier League manager came very close to winning the title with Liverpool, but for a Gerrard slip. Leicester City are a very good side. Brendan Rodgers is very highly considered amongst his peers in management in the Premier League and amongst a lot of worldwide managers. Brendan Rodgers, I think, would actually be a good long-term investment for Chelsea as a manager. I think what we're seeing him build at Leicester is a consistent side who fell off last season and missed out on Champions League very late in the season. This year, they're looking pretty good. Again, it's a very inconsistent Premier League season across the board. But I think Brendan Rodgers is a good manager. I don't think he's the best out there. But if Chelsea do end up sacking Lampard, I think Brendan Rodgers could have been considered as a long-term future replacement. Now, the next geezer is a man who's currently a free agent. He's out of a job after Maurizio Pochettino took over at Paris Saint-Germain. Little side note, I think if Chelsea were ever going to get rid of Lampard and Pochettino was still out of a job... I think he'd be Chelsea's number one target. But Thomas Tuchel, or Thomas Tuchel, Paris Saint-Germain manager, didn't win the Champions League. Always going to win Ligue 1 in France because, well, it's not the most competition. It's getting a bit more competitive now. So over the past couple of years, it has been a bit more difficult for him. But still, Thomas Tuchel, he's renowned for falling out with individual players, which ends up with him falling out with boards. He's managed at Dortmund. He did pretty well there. He's done all right at Paris Saint-Germain as well. And I think realistically, he would probably be a top target for Chelsea if they were to sack Frank Lampard. However, I think with the nature of how he is, I think him and the Chelsea board wouldn't necessarily be a recipe for success. So for that reason, I think if Tuchel was to come in, it would very much be another case of rinse and repeat where Chelsea get in a top end manager. We might see a little bit of success when he comes in with new ideas. But the problem with Chelsea managers over the years, and I don't know if it's always going to be the same now because we've got a much younger dressing room and there might not be as many older players with the kind of influence that we've had over the years. But an issue with Chelsea managers that have been at the top of their game at the time of them coming in is that there always seems to be a dressing room fallout, which is something that's been raised regarding Lampard. But... I don't think that is the case at the moment. There's obviously going to be a couple of players that are frustrated, maybe Tomori because of a lack of minutes, but with Tuchel's record of falling out with people, I don't necessarily think it would be the best option, but you could bring in success. Rinse and repeat category, and we move once again. Into a man who has been in the news this week for breaking down in tears after his side beat Liverpool. A beautiful footballing moment. Just a beautiful sporting moment in general, really. Ralph Hasenhutl, manager of Southampton. He came in and Southampton were looking dead and buried. They had a massive 9-0 loss. Looked as though they were destined to head down to the championship. However, in the classic footballing cliche phrase of steadying the ship, with Southampton being near the south coast, that was a dreadful one, but we move into it anyway... Hassan Hutu has established himself as one of the best managers in the Premier League. He's not managing one of the better squads. However, what he's getting out of the Southampton side right now is a lot. They're yeah, actually doing very well. If you're, we're talking about teams being in a title hunt, it would be very rude of me to not consider Southampton in this unpredictable Premier League season. They're not going to win the league, in my humble opinion, and I'm sure in the opinion of many of you lot as well. But Hassan Hootel's doing a brilliant job at Saints. Where do I think I put him in this Chelsea FC potential manager tier list? I think it would probably be another one of those where, because of the lack of Champions League experience, he might come in, and if it goes wrong, it would simply be a case of rinse and repeat. Chelsea would have to admit that they needed to get a higher calibre manager. I wouldn't see it working for too long. Now, another person that has always been linked with the Chelsea job, he's been out of a job since, I think, May 2019, it's Allegri, the former Juventus manager, wins a lot of trophies, he's a decent manager, and Chelsea have always kind of had a conversation regarding Allegri, and I think, I think I might misquote this, but I think back in 2017, or sometime around then, we offered him a £10 million a year contract, and he kind of laughed it away. And I don't know if he laughed it away because it wasn't enough money, because that is a bloody lump sum of money to say the least however 
That always leaves kind of a sour taste in my mouth. I think if it all goes wrong for Arteta at Arsenal, I think Arsenal would certainly be after Allegri. Do I think it would work at Chelsea? I do think he'd bring success, but comparably, I'd say it would be something along the lines of an Antonio Conte, where he comes in and a new system and a new reinvigoration of energy might come in and could mount a title challenge. It's very hard to say these days in the Premier League that a manager, despite whatever pedigree they may have, can they come in and guarantee immediate success when you've got the likes of Klopp established at Liverpool, Guardiola established at Manchester City? It's not as easy as it may have used to have been for Chelsea to chop and change managers and expect immediate success here at this top level in the Premier League. As for Allegri, I'd probably put him in the rinse and repeat category again. He's a big name, could bring immediate success, but do I see him as a long-term manager? No, but we do move into the final manager of this video, and it is the Red Bull Leipzig manager Julian Nagelsmann, a man who has crafted, despite being only 33 years old, a beautiful style of football at RB Leipzig, a team who are relatively new on the footballing scene, a manager who is still relatively new on the footballing scene. However, he gets a lot of plaudits for what he's been doing at Red Bull Leipzig. They play some really good football. And when you look at who Chelsea have just invested in going forward, Timo Werner, you could definitely say that Nagelsmann got more out of Werner than Lampard is currently doing. I know it's still very early days in the Timo Werner Chelsea career, and I do expect him to turn this form around that isn't great at the moment and start bagging in goals for Chelsea and being a long-term future hit at Stamford Bridge. So Nagelsmann, very, very young, similar to that of Frank Lampard. Even though, I repeat myself again, I don't want Lampard sacked if, and if it happens, Nagelsmann would definitely be a man who would be very high on my list. I would like him to join if it was something that we need to go and do. And I think he would actually be able to build with the style of football and tactics that he's already built, which is probably a little bit higher than that of Lampard right now in terms of the way he's developed his tactical managerial style. I think Nagelsmann would be a very good appointment. It is the kind of video where it's something that as a Chelsea channel, I feel as though I need to address it. And it was a kind of different style of just talking about the other managers that are being linked. I wanted to make it more into something that you guys know comes up on this channel once in a while, a tier list. Thought it was a nice one to do, despite it not being nice, because I want Lampard to succeed. I want him to be given more time. And I think actually it's probably the perfect way for me to make that message clear for people that keep on tweeting me, keep on Instagram DMing me, keep on asking in the comments, do I want Lampard to stay? Yes, I do. I want him to be given more time. You've got a quality squad. And I think that when we appoint Lampard as the manager, we need to really appreciate what he has done so far. Definitely make it clear that what he's doing right now isn't good enough. Give him time to fix it. If he doesn't, then, well, maybe it could be one of the 10 managers that come in that we mentioned in today's video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit the like button and let me know where you would put each manager in the comments down below. Subscribe if you're new. Huge thank you once again to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Link is in the description so that you guys can go and sign up for £2.86 a month with the discount code YESGUYS. You know how it works. I'll see you all tomorrow. Come on, you blues.